Coming up on this Friday edition of Daybreak, following up on President Park Geun-hye's proposal for a reunion of Korean families separated by the war, South Korea is expected to suggest discussing the matter to the North as early as today. Three members of Shinzo Abe's cabinet and 90 Japanese lawmakers visit the controversial Yasukuni Shrine dedicated to Japan's war dead on Korea's Liberation Day, triggering strong condemnation from Korea and China. Tokyo also fails to express remorse and sincere mourning for Japan's past aggressions. Plus, the United Nations has hastily arranged a closed-door discussion on the Egyptian government's brutal crackdown on pro-Morsi supporters that killed more than 600 people. US President Obama denounces the violence. Daybreak begins now. You're watching Daybreak on Friday, August 16th, and I'm Choi Yusun here in Seoul. In her first presidential speech marking Korea's liberation from Japan's colonial rule, President Park Geun-hye used the occasion to not only deliver a message to Japan, but also to make a proposal to North Korea. Our presidential correspondent Oh jin -ji reports on the president's suggestion for a reunion of Korean families separated during the war. President Park has officially proposed to Pyongyang the two countries hold a reunion for families separated by the Korean War sometime around Chuseok, a major Korean national holiday, which falls on September 18th through the 20th. Speaking at a ceremony commemorating the 68th Liberation Day on Thursday, she also expressed her expectations for the future of the two Koreas, especially with the two sides reaching an agreement on the normalization of the Kaesong Industrial Complex. The president pledged to set up a foundation for the reunification of the two Koreas, as true liberation will only be fulfilled when there is peace on the peninsula and when the South and the North eventually become one. She once again called on Pyongyang to change and abandon its nuclear program to become a responsible member of the international community. President Park also sent a strong message to Japan. She urged Tokyo to show courageous leadership in healing the wounds Japan left behind in the hearts of Koreans during its colonial rule from 1910 to 1945. During a luncheon with independence activists and their families following the ceremony, President Park said she hopes that Japan will reflect back with sincerity on its past wrongdoings. She added that the South Korean government's relationship with Japan will be based on its firm stance on historical issues. Oh jin -ju, News. Following up on the president's reunion proposal, the South Korean government plans to suggest Red Cross talks on the issue through the inter-Korean hotline as early as this Friday. An official at Seoul's Unification Ministry says that it takes roughly 30 days to organize such events but that the government would not be tied down by any deadlines as it is more important to make sure the reunions are well prepared. The official stressed the importance of resuming the reunions as more than 80 percent of the 73,000 registered separated family members in the South are over the age of 70. Over in Japan, three members of Shinzo Abe cabinet pay their respects at the controversial Yasukuni War Shrine on Thursday, along with some 90 lawmakers. Prime Minister Abe stayed away over concerns of further damaging regional ties, but sent a cash donation offering his, quote, thanks to those who fought for the country and gave their precious lives. The Yasukuni Shrine honors two and a half million Japanese war dead, including some convicted Class A war criminals. 
In a speech marking Japan's surrender in World War II, Abe failed to carry on the tradition of expressing Tokyo's remorse and sincere mourning for Japan's past aggressions to neighboring countries. Both Seoul and Beijing condemned the Yasukuni visits, saying Tokyo has turned a blind eye to history and beautified its wartime invasion. A popular Japanese band has released a single that criticizes the Japanese government for its improper education of modern history. Despite holding a political message, the song serves as a wish for peace around the world. Kim Minji gives us a sneak peek of the song. Japanese rock band Southern All Stars, or also known as Sajan, have released a single that criticizes Tokyo for its improper education of modern history. Let's take a look at the music video, Peace to Highlight. Released last month, the song illustrates the current situation in East Asia and portrays Japan heightening tensions with neighboring countries. The lyrics criticize the Japanese government, saying it does not teach modern history properly and points out the shortcomings in Japanese education. The song opens by saying people's opinions do not change even through dialogue and calls for cooperation by understanding each other's historical differences. During the music video, actors wearing the masks of Korean President Park Geun-hye and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe argue, while people in the masks of U.S. President Barack Obama and Chinese President Xi Jinping fight. The clip later shows the leaders reconcile with one another by understanding their differences in history and deciding to cooperate. Despite containing a political message, Peace to Highlight has become a hit in Japan, reaching number one on the Oregon chart. Kim Minji, Arirang News. If you want the latest news from Korea and around the world, return to the negotiation. President Park Geun Hye plan given the current circumstances. On your way to work or at home, ministry. the legislature will convene a. Tune into Daybreak on Arirang TV. The UN Security Council is scheduled to hold an emergency session to deal with the chaos in Egypt, which saw over 600 people killed and more than 4,000 injured on Thursday. The violence peaked uh, as security forces stormed sit-in protests held by supporters of ousted President Mohamed Morsi. The latest bloodshed is by far the worst violence Egypt has seen since the revolution that toppled Hosni Mubarak in 2011. U.S. President Barack Obama condemned the latest violence and canceled a joint military exercise that was to be held between the two countries. But Obama stopped short of saying Washington would cut off the 1.3 billion U.S. dollars in aid it sends to Egypt every year. UN inspectors are soon expected to arrive in Syria to investigate the suspected use of chemical weapons there. The UN team is to visit three sites over the next two weeks, including the northern town of Khan al-Assal, which is at the center of the allegations. Over 25 people died in the town in March in an alleged chemical weapons attack. The other two locations subject to the investigation have not been disclosed. Meanwhile, the crisis in Syria appears to be spilling over to neighboring Lebanon. At least 14 people were killed and some 200 wounded Thursday after a large explosion ripped through a Hezbollah stronghold in Beirut. Watchers say the suspected car bomb attack could have been in retaliation for Hezbollah supporting Syrian government forces against the rebels in Syria. Time now to check with Reuters to see what, what other stories are making headlines around the world. Wind and rain lash southern China as Typhoon Utor hits. The cyclone had eased to a tropical storm by Thursday morning after sweeping through Guangxi and Guangdong provinces the day before. Utor left felled trees and damaged buildings in its wake. Cyclones are common at this time of year in the South China Sea picking up strength from the area's warm waters and dissipating over land. 
More than 158,000 people were evacuated in southern China after Utor devastated parts of the Philippines, killing six. Cleaning up the streets of Baghdad after a deadly car bomb attack. Thursday saw a series of blasts in the Iraqi capital that killed more than 30, according to police. At least a hundred others were wounded. One bomb exploded here, a few hundred meters from Baghdad's international zone, close to the Iraqi foreign ministry. That blast killed four and wounded 12, sources said. Here, in the capital's eastern Baladiet district, a car bomb exploded near a traffic police station, killing five people and wounding 17. An eyewitness said living near government buildings put citizens at risk. Many people were killed and wounded. It's unacceptable that a government office be among houses. There is no security and militants are able to hit any target. Iraq is experiencing some of its worst violence since U.S. troops left 18 months ago, with Sunni Islamist militants, including al-Qaeda, waging an insurgency against the Shiite-led government. Multiple car bombs each week are killing scores of people, and the government has launched a security crackdown to try to round up suspected militants. Over 4,000 people have died so far this year. The results are out. Mali's presidential election runoff was decisively won by the favorite, Ibrahim Boubacar Keita. A majority of 77 percent gives him a strong mandate for sweeping reforms in the war-torn West African state. The Minister for Territorial Administration announced the results Thursday. The candidate Ibrahim Boubacar Keita, this marks a transition back to democratic rule after a military coup in March 2012 plunged the country into turmoil. Former Prime Minister Keita says his priority is lasting peace in the north of the country. He also pledged to eliminate widespread corruption and revive Mali's ailing economy. And back here in Korea, savers now can receive bank interest for even small bank deposits. For the past 12 years, most Korean banks haven't paid any interest to checking accounts with deposits of less than 500,000 won or some 450 U.S. dollars. The nation's financial regulator advised the banks to change the practice in an attempt to protect savers from lower income brackets. With the measure, Korea's major commercial banks, including Shinhan and Kunmin Bank, will pay 0.1 percent in interest to deposits less than $450. Experts estimate some 150 million bank accounts will be influenced by the change. The popularity of the Korean wave has spread across the globe, promoting a wide range of the nation's cultural exports from music to movies. Many people want to learn the Korean language as a result, and application developers have been quick to take advantage of the interest. Our Paul Lee shows us how Hangul is being adapted for this digital generation. Here in this cafe located in southern Seoul, a group of international students have gathered to take a language lesson in Korean. Each of them are practicing proper pronunciation of Korean characters from a native speaker, all without a single teacher in the room. This new mobile application allows anyone to study Korean from the convenience of their smartphone or tablet PC. The developer modeled the software after the way mothers here teach their own children the Korean alphabet or Hangul quickly and effectively. The educational app has been distributed for free to online stores from the United States to India, and the number of downloads has been on the rise. If you look at the current reviews or similar ratings these days, these apps are garnering high praise among users. In the case of students these days who prefer to study on their own, there are now many more ways to learn a language than in the past. Many other local developers hope to capitalize on the success of the Korean wave, as more foreigners seek to learn the Korean language from someone with a native tongue. Paul Yi, Arirang News.
and TGI Friday, everyone, as we kick things off in football. Now, for all you football fans out there, it's going to be a great weekend as the 2013-2014 football season kicks off in Europe. Now, a lot of big matches to look forward to this weekend, but none bigger than the return of Park Ji Sung in the Netherlands. Now, of course, PSV Eindhoven announced through their official Facebook page that the South Korean midfielder was able to get his work permit and will now be able to play this coming weekend. And it looks like the 32-year-old chose number 33 as his uniform number after wearing number 7 with the team from 2003 to 2005. Meanwhile, PSV is set to face off against the go-ahead Eagles to kick off the season, with fans hoping to see Park ji Sung make his first start with the team since coming over on loan. And staying in football, but back here in the nation, we had one Kaylee Classic match take place yesterday as FC Seoul took on the Tejon Citizens at home at the Seoul World Cup Stadium. Of course, going into the game here, it was a high-scoring game here as Molina in the 27th minute of the match finds the back of the net, scoring his sixth goal of the season as FC Seoul takes a 1-0 lead. Stays that one to the 67th minute of the match. Let's make this 2-0 FC Seoul thanks to go-go Ko Myung-jin sending one past the goalkeeper. But wait, here comes the Tejon Citizens. Lee Gang-jin scores in the 71st minute and it's 2-1 FC Seoul. Now, 15 minutes Minutes later in this game, Hwang Jin Sang this time, the equalizer, and the match is now tied 2-2. Two to two. But we're not done yet. We're going to go into the 90-plus minute here. Here's FC Seoul's Ko Yohan. That's the game winner, 3-2, to two, as FC Seoul steals three points from Taejeon as they're now in third place with the win. Quite the exciting game there, but we're going to move on as we had some Thursday night's KBO action as the LG Twins came back to beat the Hanwha Eagles 6-4. Also, the Nexon Heroes back after a break beat the Lotte Giants 6-1 thanks to back-to-back -back solo shots from Park Byung-ho and Kang Jong-ho in the seventh inning of the game. Now, it's Lotte's sixth consecutive loss. Now, with that said, we're going to take a look at the other two games that took place in the league, starting off with the Samsung Lions taking on the NC Dinos. Now, we're going to go over to the second inning of the game here. Here's Park Sung-min of the Samsung Lions. Solo shot to deep left field, and it's 1-0 Samsung Lions. Third inning is NC's turn this time. Mo Chang-min sending one deep to left field. This one ties the ball game 1-1. One one. Next up, fourth inning, Ji Seo Kun flies out to right field. This is actually going to bring home a runner as NC takes the lead 2-1. to one. They're going to shift over to the fifth inning of the game. Here's Park Kani, RBI double to deep left, hits the fence, and it's a tie ball game once again. Now we're going to shift over to the eighth inning of the game. No Jin Hyuk this time. Two-run double to deep right center, and the NC Dinos take the lead back 4-2. to two. And what do you know, the scrappy NC Dinos, they're going to take this game 4-2. to two. And with the Samsung loss and an LG victory, both teams are now once again tied for first. And next up, the Tucson Bears taking on the Kia Tigers. First inning, Lee Jong-wook to lead off the game, sending one deep to right field. Back, 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 back. Gone a solo shot here as Tucson takes an early 1-0 lead. Fifth inning, Kim Jae-ho at bat singles home another and it's 2-0 Tucson Bears. Seventh inning, here's Lee Jong-wook once again. This time an RBI double to right field and it's 3-0 Tucson Bears. We're going to go over to the next play. Min Byung Hun, he's been red hot lately. RBI single here, adding another run. Meanwhile, Tucson's new farm pitcher, Derek Hankins, tried to win his first game in the KBO, throws a gem. Seven innings of no run ball while striking out three as the Tucson Bears take this game four to nothing. And staying in baseball, but over in the major leagues after South Korea's Ryan Jin beat Matt Harvey of the New York Mets for his 12th win of the season, looks like there's going to be another big matchup to look forward to next week. Now with the lefty trying to win in this year's NL Rookie of the Year honors, his biggest rival at the moment is Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez. 
who is currently 8 and 5 with an ERA of 2.45. Now, he also has 149 strikeouts in just 139 and one third innings. But it looks like the South Korean will be facing off against Fernandez on the 20th as the LA Dodgers are set to face off against the Miami Marlins. Now, while Shelby Miller has been struggling as of late, Fernandez has become one of the best rookie pitchers in the league, as many consider him to be the favorite to win the NL Rookie of the Year honors. And moving on to domestic basketball, as the pro amateur competition kicked off on Thursday, as the KT Sonic Boom were able to breeze past Hanyang University 71 to 56. Also, Seoul SK Knights all over Yonsei University as SK takes the second game 83 to 65. And of course, later today, Anyang KGC takes on Kungguk University with Chunju KCC Aegis taking on Kyungi University as well. Now, with that said, we're going to finish things off in golf while Pagimbi's quest for a season Grand Slam fell short. Well, she can still win something that not a lot of female sports stars can say they won the Women's Sports Foundation's Player of the Year honors. Now, with the WSF Player of the Year award being given out in October, fans can cast their vote on the nominees. And it looks like Pagin B will be one of the nominees, including Kim Yeon Ah, who made an amazing comeback earlier this year. Now, the award is given to the best female athlete, judging by their performances from August of last year to July of 2013. Well, that's going to wrap it up for me. This has been SJ. Have a great weekend, everyone, and see you guys again for your sports needs. Happy Friday! I'm Lee ji -hyun with your latest weather updates. Now, another blazing Friday is on tap today with a chance of outbreaks of rain in northern parts of Gyeonggi and some parts of Gangwon provinces, along with thunder and lightning in the morning hours. But the rest of the nations will be under lots of sunshine with low clouds passing by and temperatures will be soaring mid to upper 30s across the nations. So excessively hot weather continues to sweep the nation. He wave warning and advisor issued across the country. In fact, heatwave warning has been in place for more than two weeks now for Daegu and the surrounding areas as temperatures are remaining above 35 degrees Celsius. So please take a good care of yourself by drinking plenty of water and stay indoors. Now this weekend should be the hottest weekend, so the continuous intense heat we've been dealing with will persist and that will make us feel extremely uncomfortable in the afternoon and today. And even in the index indicates almost everybody feels stressed and irritated, especially between 1 to 4 p.m. In fact, it's been said the numbers of people who got in fight increased lately due to the weather conditions. So Let's take, try to take it easy today, besides it's Friday today. Now the August heat will continue to bake the nation this weekend, but there's a chance of uh, rain in the capital and the surrounding areas on Sunday afternoon. And after that rain, temperatures will start to ease a bit from early next week. Well, we're not looking at any significant rain in southern provinces, but readings will finally cool off to low 30s. Not so much cooler, but better than 35 and 37, right? Well, right now, it doesn't look so bad. Uh, clouds are passing by but we should wake up to mostly to partly sunny skies but towards the afternoon we will get hotter and sunnier conditions so let's take a look at those numbers uh, to be honest I didn't have to really change too much for the readings for today because it's gonna be exactly the same as yesterday the capital and Busan is expected to jump up to 33 degrees Celsius that's 91 degrees Fahrenheit and scorching heat continues for Daegu and Gwangju at 36 and 35 now moving over to other places, uh, Jeju and Daejeon, Dokdo, all these three spots will be hiking up to 33, while Mount Kungang will be the hottest place today at 34. Now that's all for Korea, and here's the global forecast for viewers around the world. That's all for me at this hour. Enjoy your morning commute and have a wonderful Friday, everyone.
And those are the stories we have for you at this hour. Stay with us throughout the day as we bring you the latest headlines.